yellow brick house called Rimawera, full of wonders. Silver bells and tiny shells for playing bridge that we used as money for a shop. Stop and hide the thimble now. Go and look with nimble fingers, turning over precious things and sneaking through the den. Getting warmer, warmer still, and our hearts fill up with love for our Nana. Calm and safe and a little bit stern, but with a twinkle in her eye, tiddly winkle and so many wrinkles, I take her hand and pinch her skin to see how quickly it falls back into place. She commands her space from a brown chair. She is always there, it seems, at Claremont Ave, baking rock cakes and making kumquat jam, squatting in the garden or popping up to Bentley shops, gently guiding us and showing us the best way to be kind, to be funny, to be bold, to be thankful, and to be old and wise. In this guise, it's harder to see that in her youth, she was a beauty. But more than that, she was courageous. Her stories tell of places far away and foreign, of black boys and lost boys, and little graves on islands out to sea, of Colourful hats made beacons, and of four sisters dark and bright. We cast our minds back, to a beach where Nana dives into the surf and smiles ready cheeked and sticky with salt. And we can taste that curried egg and soup and bread and at the back of our throats now, a lump is forming. There's all the ferns of Camellia still adorning her front door, but the mistress of the house is there no more.